so uh, the hardest thing one of the hardest things one of the most important things is reading terrain and the reason is, is there's a lot of things you got to watch out for so first snow density right this is some of the lightest snow that i've ridden in all year it's just like blower powder pretty much okay um sometimes it's wetter and that's gonna it's all gonna change how your sled reacts like my sled is fishtailing quite a bit when i go into the powder because the snow is so light um the other things you got to watch out for are snow depth of course the snow depth makes a big difference on how the sled's going to handle um but on top of that is the snow depth and existing tracks underneath it right you, you got to read and see that okay that's all tracked up underneath and where it's tracked up it's going to feel shallower than where it's not tracked up right okay so that'll make a difference in how the sled rides on edge and just how the how the snow feels underneath you and then on, on top of all that are hidden obstacles, right? So like stumps and logs and stuff. I mean, so you got to read all that stuff. And that's just reading in the terrain. And then you have to be able to see the terrain in order to read it. And we deal a lot with flat light and fog and stuff like that when we're riding. So the flat light adds even a more complex layer to that. Well, if you're the second one riding and you're riding in a similar track, you can see from that other person's track kind of what the terrain looks like. But on a fresh day like today, like you can tell what it looks like over there because of the old tracks and there's enough ripple. But here you can't tell. It's just a flat, it looks like a flat road and it most likely is because this is the groomed trail. But there could be a drop and you would never know it until you hit it. So. That's all That's all the fun part about that. Do your goggles, the color of them, does it help you see better? A little like, bit. Like the depths and shit? Yeah. I have I yellow lenses probably. and I have pink lenses and that all makes a difference on being able to see. But either way, in today's light, it honestly really sucks. Uh, um, <laughs> Overcast, yeah. This is some of the best snow that we've had. And so this is a snowmobiler's dream. But the flat light, if this was a sunny day, I mean, oh, it'd, be, be great. it'd be perfect. So Yeah, what for me to do? Like standing, this is difficult. Yeah, you got, well, so maybe rotate it. That's true. Yeah, if you rotate it up, maybe. Oh, and it looks like the block might be a little bit far into the right. It might need to be moved to the left a little bit. The, the 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 throttle block might need to be moved to the left a little bit. I like holding out here better. I feel like I have better control on pulling on the sled. Yeah. Like when you're cornering, I'm trying to do that and pull. But does that make much of a difference? Or am I going to damage something pulling too hard? You're not going to damage it pulling too hard, but uh, pulling isn't the proper maneuver. Counter steering is. You don't want to, if, you if you're pulling the sled all day, you're going to be out of energy real quick. So instead of pulling, you counter steer and you let the sled do the work. So uh, a good analogy that I've heard, I think it was Dan Adams, is imagine a beach ball, a big, like four foot beach ball or something, right? Okay. And if you drop that beach ball at the top of the hill, wherever it's going to go, God, that's the fall line, right? So a sled is like a big beach ball. So you always are constantly fighting against gravity to try to get your sled where you want it to go. If you're going down the fall line, that's fine, but the fall line's not always an option, okay? So we're going up, and we're kind of going up the fall line, but if you can see, it actually goes a little bit to the left here. So the fall line is a little bit to the left, so the sled's gonna wanna keep on trying to pull to the left, pull to the left, okay? So the cheater way is, and then the incorrect way or whatever, uh, the, the what people think is the lazy way, but it actually ends up causing more work, is to put two feet over here and just kind of surfboard it, right? And then surfboard it and then just steer and kind of pull the sled as you're going. That ends up getting more tiring. The better way is to counter steer downhill as you are moving and that inside ski is going to want to dip, right? Okay, because I'm count I'm going left. The snow pushing on the ski is going to cause it to go. The transfer is this way. The weight transfer is going to go. This so way. then the whole top of the sled is going to try to go to the right. So then I can stay neutral on the sled like this. Maybe put a little bit of leaning, a little bit of weight on that right foot, right, and and counter steer that way and get the sled to do what I want. And you can always turn uphill and then come back down, and then turn up and then come back down if you want, right? And then that that's where you kind of start carving. Um, but yeah, so that's how that's how I would ride this. Also, when you, uh, uh, Brett Rasmussen actually had a really good uh, explanation on this. When you go to counter steer, like if you're trying to lean right, don't just keep your foot square to the running board and, and lean right. You actually rotate your hip out and you rotate so that you're on your toe. And then you, does that make sense? So you actually go on your toe and you put that like at a 15, 20 degree and you rotate your hip out. So. That, that helps you with control. So you rotate there, rotate back this way, rotate this way. It's kind of like snowboarding in a sense. But anyway, just right here, you could probably climb this little, it's just a little hill, it does get a little bit steeper up top. But you could probably climb this without carving or anything like that, but might as well get you used to the idea. Have you ever ridden a four-wheeler and tried to get it to balance on two tires? No. 
Okay. So, but it's like, a, if you could imagine, yeah, you lean yeah, if you could imagine getting the four wheeler to balance on two tires, you have to counter steer, get it to roll. And then when you get it to roll, it's up on those two tires. And then you have to work the steering and your weight and the gas and everything. Yeah. So pretty much you're doing that with a sled, but instead of, instead of four tires to two tires, you're three points of contact to two points of contact, right? So you have to get it up on edge to really balance it. And in deeper snow, it's easier than in harder, shallower snow. I don't like that because I can't see. Well, I mean, you can see this guy's tracks. And it's always easier to make your own tracks than it is to make something than somebody else's. What you can do is either roll it the rest of the way or, which is probably the easiest because that's uphill, but no, no, leave it on. Start it back up. Start it back up. Roll it back? Start it back up. Okay, you're going to want to spin the track and then lift up on the sled while the track is spinning. So give it some throttle. Give it some good throttle and spin it up and lift the sled up. You hit the you hit the kill switch. Oh. More, more. Okay, good, 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 good. You don't want to bury it. You might be buried now. Oh, God, Hold on. Okay. Oh, I did the same. <laughs> It's just a little bit deep. Damn, dude, my legs are freaking weak. What do you mean? You do leg day all the time. I do. <laughs> but not all day. What do you mean? We've only been up here for like 45 minutes. Well, that's what I'm saying. Some poor soul is going to come through here and freaking whoop, right into that. That's okay. All right. Now you got to get her turned around. Well, I got to get turned around. Well, I mean, you can keep on going up if you want. This gets a little bit steeper here, and there's a, there's a, little, there's a little dip there. There isn't there. Yep, so yeah, you probably want to turn down and then come back up. Okay, well, check this out. So my sled is facing a little bit downhill, so I'm going to do wrong foot forward. I'm going to hit the gas. My, my skis are pointed at you, right? I'm not going to go to you. I'm going to go up because it's going to transfer my weight and dig. So watch this, Caleb. Hey, I'm flat. You see, I turned right. I turned right, so that caused my left side to dip because I'm turning right. And I'm leaning left, turning right, trying to go left. Go, 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 go! <laughs> no, no. Crank your handlebars all the way downhill. Move a little bit. Keep going. Okay. Okay, so to get you started, I mean you can you can put your knee up here or whatever, but just do that and put your knee up here. If you're trying to turn left, counter steer right. Just crank it all the way right. Crank it all the way right. You see that? The, ted, the sled just tipped over for you into the turn. I have to go figure out where Caleb went. He just kept on going down. So you did the counter steer and it started to dip. I didn't stay in the throttle. And you didn't, not only did you not stay in the throttle, but you started to bring your counter steer back. Yeah. You have to keep your counter steer. Keep looking where you're going. Keep your counter steer in check. Because if you stop counter steering, then the sled's going to come back up normal, right? It's going to take some time. No, I know. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> how long have you been doing this? Two years. So how long have you been riding? How many times have you been riding this year though? Uh, 26. <laughs> That's a fun, fun little play. Yeah, actually. I mean, I, so right here, did you turn downhill when you were carving the left still? Yep. Yeah, and then I like, so I'll turn downhill to initiate the carve, and as soon as it starts, then I'll turn back into it. So it just depends on where I want the weight of the sled. Yeah, here, I'll come in all side hill towards you, right here, and you'll see my skis are gonna be probably, in the deeper snow, you don't have to counter steer as much, but you'll watch, my skis are probably gonna be pointed downhill most of the way. Did you see that? It was yeah. ever so slightly, but they're pointed downhill. I didn't notice that. Yeah. yeah. I was kind of comfortable dude with the leaning and everything because that's the part that's getting me right now, I think. And most people freak out about steering downhill because they think that that means they're going to go hit that tree that's downhill or they hit that ravine that's downhill. Right. Well, usually focus on something like that. That's what you're going to end up going to. Yeah, you just don't want to look at it. You want to look, counter steer, look where you want to go and lean. Counter steer, look where you want to go and lean. Right now is my hardest part. Yeah. You'll get it. Like I said, like if I'm going up this, I'm gonna be my foot somewhere in here. This foot's not gonna have a whole lot of weight on it. I'm gonna balance back and forth a little bit. uphill side so that's where you would start it and spin the track a little bit but look at hey right there that's the balance point or so you feel how it's kind of balanced right there maybe a little bit more maybe over a little bit more but so if i was trying yeah somewhere in there if i was going downhill right there i would probably and i was trying to go this way i would have that sled tilted like that you into the right yeah and just pin it just go I said pin it that's not pinning it I said pin it yeah well, so when I say pin it I mean to the bar steer downhill okay I want you to do this so that you can start going that way right foot forward like that Hit the throttle, blip the throttle, and pull the sled over at the same time to get your sled on edge. Like that. Do that real quick. Oh, you gotta keep it counter steered. So do it again, keep it counter steered. Keep it counter steered more. And look at, hey, stand up, stand up tall. Get your right foot all the way forward. Get your left foot off the sled in the snow. There you go. Now counter steer it, pull the sled to you. Get it all, just pull it over on you. All the way over on you. Pull it all the way over on you. There you go. Okay. See, it's not too bad. If it comes over too far, no big deal. Come down here. And dip, just steer that way to the tree and lean this way. Watch me do this. So I 
was counter steering and then I turned back a little bit, but I dipped my shoulder. You have to dip your shoulder and commit and use the throttle to help you balance. Just like you would coming into a berm on a dirt bike, you dip that shoulder, right? And even on a dirt bike, you counter steer. Like if you notice all those switchbacks up on the trails, a lot of the times if you're going, if you're going left, a lot of the times there's an initial right turn and then a left. Because you turn into it and you go left and that counter steer is what flips that bike. It's just, we're doing it a hundred times more on a sled. We have to counter steer more and longer. goes. Hey, that wasn't half bad. Just try to do a little loop on your left hand side. So did you feel when you lost your edge? Yeah. Okay, so you need to get your edge back. He needs to stand up more, but he's feeling it out. There you go, he got his edge back. Keep the counter steer, Caleb. There you go. He's Hey. There we go. Okay, there he goes. There he goes. He felt it. He felt it. Keep on the gas. It's all right. That was good. Did you realize how wrong that felt with your left foot on the running board and your right foot off? You were like doing this and you were like, wait. And then all of a sudden it felt better. You don't want your body facing that way. You want your body facing this way. So even like with two foot up here, that's not proper. You need to get this foot just off the sled. It doesn't have to be walking, but just off the sled or else it's gonna do weird things to your body. Right. But no, you had it, that was good. So what happened was you didn't transfer back soon enough and the snow got deep. Right. So your, your, your skis are already pointed downhill a little bit. So that's perfect for you to point them downhill and just hit the gas and go. But you need to get, you need to get your weight on that side of the sled. So hey, this is a good example right here. If you dig the track in with the blip the throttle, but you're gonna you have to keep going. So do that, just like that. Blip the throttle, then pick your left foot up, all right? Give it a little step as you go. There you go. Don't be afraid of that throttle, man. Don't be afraid of it. You can always slow down. See, that wasn't that bad. I lost the handlebars. <laughs> well, I made it. Yeah, see, that wasn't bad. See, I don't mind straight, I can do that. Yeah, and did you feel that once you started digging that track, how the sled was more Relative to your movements, yeah, you should it, it should it should much. start to feel more like a motorcycle the faster you go, okay, and especially the lighter the skis get. Go 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 go! No, I said go. Oh, I, I thought you said no no no. No go. So I was telling you to go 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 because just like a motorcycle, if you stop in the middle of a turn, Whoa. you're gonna fall. Yeah. Under the cabin so he can have a little break, and there's also a flat bed over there he can play in. Uh, but first, he does have a couple of hill climbs that he's going to have to do, coming out of the bowl and stuff.
the drainage is anywhere the water normally runs, right? So that's all it is. But because of that, it weaves back and forth. So we call it the roller coaster. There's like hills and stuff. So this is an instant where you try to use the terrain to your advantage and lean and flow with it, right? Like you would on a motorcycle. If you stop when your sled starts to get sideways, you're gonna fall off. So you just gotta keep your speed consistent and just use your momentum, all right? So go up that. You need to stand up. You don't have control of your body weight if you're sitting down. Stand up. This is all the hill. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to see jack shit. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna follow these tracks. I'm gonna go first, and I'm gonna tell you that it's a nice straight line or not, and if not, we're gonna find you a nice straight line, okay? Is it hill then? Yeah, you, can you see these tracks right here? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, these are the tracks we're gonna follow. All right, do this a couple times. Climb 100 feet up. It's not that high. I don't know if you can see my sled at the top. No, okay. So climb like 200 feet in front of you and just turn out. And, and keep on the throttle when you turn out. Come back down here. So do a couple of loops so that you know what turning out feels like. You know what? You, I mean, you did that great, like riding sides and stuff. So just picture this like a nice big hillside that you're riding on your bike, right? So go up, turn out, and then come back down. Go up and then turn up and come back down. So just bank it. Do that a couple times so that you know what the turnout feels like before you're like, okay, I'm going to commit to climbing this hill. You know what I mean? With all this fog, this is a horrible day to teach somebody how to ride. Yep, nice little turnout. Easy. Yeah, you're about a third of the way up. Go a little bit higher, do another one to the right, and then I want you to come back to one to the left. Okay, so this is why I'm having you do this because you do not have the skill set yet that if you start to go off to the side to correct it and to get back on track, right? So instead, I'm having you turn out so that you're comfortable at least turning out and coming back down because you have the skill set for that. But you don't have the skill set that if your sled starts to veer to the left to correct it to bring it back up, I don't think. Right, so I need to be able to turn down instead. Yeah, turn down instead because that's easier. There you go. I didn't even tell him to do that. He, he decided he wanted to do it himself. And he, he was getting it, and then it went too far, and it freaked him out. Caleb, you have to commit. You might be too buried now. Give her a good, good wiggle with your feet, left and right. Break it loose. And then you just need to hammer down. I'll be right there. Oh, you are pointing further uphill than I thought, but either way, you're not the first person that didn't know what hammer down means. <laughs> I know what you mean. Well, then why didn't you? It's not going to do anything to the sled or to you. Okay, you need to get up front and give it a ski pull. And, but you got to pull over a little bit too. One, two, three. <laughs> These engines wrap out to 8,100 RPMs. And since it's on a clutch, it's a triple clutch, 
Just because the engine sounds like it's going like a bat out of hell, it doesn't mean that the track is. The track doesn't even engage until 4,000 RPMs. Seriously? Yeah. Um, but here, so we're gonna start a little bit further to the left over here. And remember, you can always slow down. You need to get your momentum down here. Right. Wide open throttle down here, okay? So come, come line up next to me. You did good. So do it again, maybe a little bit. Try to stay a little bit to the right a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, you, you were a little bit hard on the throttle off before you were straight. <laughs> you want to be pointing in the direction you're ready to go, but you got it, you leaned it back, so. And even after the little bump that you hit, I was surprised you you, you got it back, so. I tried. Yeah, you got it. trenches so bad you need to push more all right so get oh. loosen it up first keep going hard okay see so what happens is the snow comes up under the running boards and then the track is just free spinning right so now that there's space under there there should be the track should be able to go so you need to get your other foot on it and you need to shake and pin it nope Pussy foot around, pin it. And if it doesn't feel like it's starting to move after about two seconds of pinning it, then stop. One, two, three. Yep. Yeah, if you need to level it out a little bit, you can. Yeah, while, while, while pulling the throttle. Okay, here, clap your hands together. Since you have glove warm or hand warmers, all that snow, it melts and then it soaks into your gloves. Okay. Okay. Okay, and I don't want you to let out till you're up there. Hold on. I'm trying to push some of this down and I want you to pin it and I want you to shake twice as fast as that as you pin it on three one two three <laughs> Don't worry about anything like that. What I want you to do is balance on your left side or on your right side, figure out which one is easier. Okay. Just balance on that side. If you happen to turn left, that's fine. Like a snowboard, not like a tightrope. There you go.
used to the weight of the snowmobile, it's going to be super helpful to you. Do you see how as soon as you get lazy and sit down, it goes downhill? You gotta stand up. What? My body's tired. This is a workout. This is Teach Dougie workout. All this beautiful snow. And then we're calling it quits at about two o'clock. <laughs> so you're like this the whole time. And that's why I'm like, I'm up. And I'm and I got my, my pressure on my front knee and I'm standing up more than anything. My back is straight, my knees are bent. If you're like this, that's probably why you're tired. And you don't have a whole lot of control. Your body weight is over that side of the sled. It's easier for you to pull over. If you're like this, put your knee right here. Look at and, and you can put your knees here and balance. Put your right ski into my track. Don't be afraid to counter steer it. You're tired. Get out of this. He's pretty darn tired. There he goes. He took his right foot off. He needs to stand up. But he's moving. That was awesome. Except for the part where you're sitting on your heel. You don't have any control. You can't do anything. Straighten your skis out or point them downhill a little bit. And like I said, if it's easier to go uphill, go uphill. Yeah. Go up around that mound. There's the road. I'm gonna see if I can get up above these trees right here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 
up and did you have did you have fun though? I mean, would you do it again? Yeah, it was a good time. Yeah. This, the side hill and stuff is definitely takes a lot out of you when you gotta you know you gotta learn a lot to figure out how it works and the best way to control the sled. Yeah. So it takes a little bit of time to get all that going and then it, then you know once you start to figure it out, it starts to get better and easier and a little more comfortable with throwing your weight to the other side and just knowing you gotta dig a little bit to get back where you need to go. Um, I think, you know, I took them up North Fork and there's that like little meadowy area that has like a little hill climb. Um, the reason that we went that way was because um, I knew that that climb wouldn't be tracked out like at all because I was up there on yesterday and, and it didn't look like it was hardly tracked out. Um, so the problem was is that that little meadowy area does have a little bit of a, a side hill. There's a little side hill and a little climb. Um, and I wore Caleb out on that yeah. pretty, pretty quickly, so he didn't get a chance to, you know, really start fresh. Went to the cabin, hung out, and in the meadow by the cabin was okay, but it was yeah. it was chowdered up pretty good, so there was a lot of tracks in there. Um, but yeah, well, I, you know, it's our cousin Micah who rides motorcycles all the time, and same thing. Like he was like cussing and yelling and everything, and you know, it was like, what the hell? I just I'm trying to do this, and make it go here. Um, but uh, there's there's a lot of stuff that I yelled out. You probably will recognize a lot of the phrases that I use because I I learned from watching people like uh, Dan Adams and Brett Rasmussen and and uh, you know Dave Morona and, and a whole lot of Muskoka Freeriders videos just studying what what you do in what situations. Um, and so a lot of a lot of the things that I say you'll probably be like, oh hey, I've heard that in other videos. Um, hopefully I didn't try to throw too much at Caleb at once and. Uh, I don't know, if we get you to go up again, then you'll at least have a starting point, an idea on what we're doing, so. Yeah, the more you do it, you know, the more comfortable you get, and the more repetition that you do it, on top of that, you, you get used to it, what you gotta do, and you get more comfortable with throwing yourself around, or like you say, the whole counter skew, you get more comfortable once you get used to doing it. Yeah, it is. the same sled over and over again makes a difference too. It starts, it starts to feel more natural. Exactly. Well, uh, there's a lot of snow in the hills. I'm sure you guys saw that. I mean, there was from yesterday to today, it, there, there was at least eight inches in the parking lot. There had to be an extra foot on top. So I'm sure that you guys will be getting another video from me here soon. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, for liking and subscribing and all that. Maybe shoot a comment for Caleb and tell him how trashy is or something. Uh, you know, have a little fun giving him crap. Or if you have any ideas on um, what I can do better as far as when I take movies up ride with me, um, yeah, definitely give me some constructive criticism on that. I think that some people just think that I'm an asshole um, because I'm more of like a school of hard knocks, like I'll put you through it just and you'll either sink or swim. Figure it out. <laughs> the best way to do it is figure it out, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, that'll conclude our video, guys. Thanks for watching. See you later.